Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Game 2 between Ross Cawthon and Tom Dolezal. Both of these trainers are battling it out for a chance to become a finalist at the 2011 Pokemon TCG World Championships in the Masters Division. I'm Crimson, with me is Kyle Pukasukovic, and here we go! Yeah, what well, more can you ask for? We're at the World Championships. This is, this is it. This is the chance to go to the finals, have a chance to be declared the World Champion at the Pokemon Trading Card Game. There's a lot on the line here. Yeah, man, you can actually start to feel the buzz, uh, the excitement sur surrounding this game. One of these guys is actually going to be a, a, a finalist in the in the main event. Uh, he's going to be on stage and he's going to be battling it out, trying to see if he can become the you know the 2011 World Champion. Yeah, I mean both these guys have been close before. Ross, he's taken a second place before. I know he wants to get back there and actually win for once. There's always kind of something that sticks in your head when you're that close. You had a chance to be the world champion, and you just ended up second. And Tom, he's made top eight before, so he's going to want to get there. He's been close before, too, and we'll see which one moves on. Yeah, nobody wants to be a bridesmaid. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be the bride, right, guys? Yep. <laughs> Anyways, we're seeing uh, we're seeing Tom go first, and we are seeing two plus powers out of, out of Tom here. Uh, that's going to mean a knockout on the Oddish. That is... Uh, aside from our camera, our cameraman got excited too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that's huge. That is big news. First of all, that's one Oddish gone, and Ross only plays three. So if one of these other Oddishes is prized, then he's only going to have one Oddish to play. And if and one you can see the look on Ross's face, he's like, "What? What did you just do to me?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Volpix just knocked out an Oddish. Wow, and we're seeing a Sage's training here. We can actually just see the end of the game if he does not hit a Pokemon off this uh, Sage's training. But we do see a Fampy. Um, yeah, wow. I got excited here for a second because that could mean a really quick game too between uh, between these two players. If he would not have hit a, a Pokemon, which he did, then you have a 30 HP Solosis against a, um, a fire-working Vulpix dealing 20 damage, so one plus power would have been the end of it. But we are seeing Ross take his time on what po or what cards he's going to get off his stage, and he decided on one. He's still got one more choice to go. I did see a Fampy in his hand, um, so I'd be surprised if he doesn't take that unless he got another Pokemon off the Sage's training. But he's definitely going to need some sort of a Pokemon here just because 30 HP is not a lot. Right. Uh, and, you know, this is actually going to be really tough. One of the downsides of Sage's training, obviously, is you have to discard three of the five cards you look at. And when you're in this spot, you need to get a basic Pokemon to ensure your survival. Uh, as we can see, he actually discards Fanpy, Zekrom. And, yeah, um, but else. I did see him get a Chansey. So right. a Chansey's going to be coming down into play soon. Right, uh, so I think uh, actually one of the other cards he took was a card he was forced to take, which was half of the Suicune Ente Legend. You know, when you play Sage's Training early on, you might have to neglect other cards just so you don't discard... The, the really important ones that help you win the matchup. So it's definitely a double-edged sword. He doesn't have a very good setup, but we'll wow. see what happens. And you know what's unfortunate here is he actually did not have the energy to retreat his uh, Solosis. So the Solosis stayed active, and now we see a Juniper out of Tom, no doubt looking for a Junk Armor or a Plus Power to be able to knock out this um, the Solosis. But then again, <laughs> I, just met, I just saw that he evolved Ninetales. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't... I don't know. I don't know if I agree with this. I think I would have just discarded the Ninetales. You still have one left in your deck. Actually, and... you discarded that the first turn. With the Junk Arm? Yep. Oh, man. Yeah, I guess that's just an unfortunate spot because that would have been a great situation to put yourself in. First of all, you get ahead by two prizes. Then you get a Solosis and an Oddish knockout. Um, as I was trying to say earlier, he only plays three Oddish and I believe three Solosis. So um, if any one of these other Pokemon is prized then you're only going to be able to put one on your bench because that's all you're going to have left in your deck. If your opponent hits a Pokemon reversal and knocks it out, then that's it. You're you're not going to have a lock this game. Um, and that is a big, big deal. So luckily for him, uh, the he well, Tom found himself forced to evolve his uh, Vulpix into his Ninetales because this is the last Ninetales left in his deck, and it doesn't look like he's going to be able to knock out the Solosis. So um, Tom's de or Ross is definitely in reasonable shape given the circumstances and at this point i think we're gonna want to see ross play a um definitely a, ideally he'd play a collector but i don't know if he's actually gonna be able to have access to that because he had to play it last turn and it looks like his sage got him a a chancy and you mentioned a suikinente legend so i don't know it looks like uh ross might still be in some bad shape here <laughs> yeah um but at the same time we saw tom start even though he was very aggressive early on started off with some fireworks now 
it slowed down <laughs> quite a bit. I saw what you did there. Yeah. Um, but we see uh, we see an eek out of Tom, so he's definitely going to be getting a new hand. Oh, wow, what a top deck. <laughs> oh, bad. Oh, oh, wow. That automatically gets uh, Ross back in this game. Um, now, at this point, Ross is definitely going to be hoping that two Oddishes are not prized, and that's one of them. If he finds one more, then, yeah, there we go. Um, we see two Oddishes, so he does not have a prized, uh, a prized Oddish, which is just great news for him because that means that he will definitely have one of his... Uh, Oddish is in play by the beginning of his next turn. He will likely have the opportunity to be able to cast uh, his twins and get a um, Vile Plume in play, which is a huge, huge uh, gain for him. Right. But anyways, that was a great, great top deck there. He needed that collector really bad. Yeah, the only better card he could have top deck there was twins probably, but even collector might be a little better getting these basics into play. Uh, but I just wanted to mention... How fragile Ross's deck can be in the early game. We know what it can do when it gets set up. We saw what it did last game. You know, Tom was what looked like he was in control, and then all of a sudden, you know, that Suikinente Legend came out, the Vile Plume and the Reuniclus were in play, and Tom just hit a brick wall. There's nothing he could do. But there are so many combinations of cards that could be prized. You could have, in this case, two Oddish would have been the end. Even one Oddish. That could have been troublesome. You can have both Vile Plumes prized, both Reuniclus prized. Uh, the Sui Kunente Legend could be prized. So many things could go wrong with your prizes, but it looks like Ross was fortunate enough in this game not to be damaged by any of those circumstances, so uh, we might just see him set up as normal, and once he does that, Tom is going to be in a lot of trouble. Yes, we will. Um, now, we do see Tom get a... First of all, he Rose Revealed, but then he got a Cynical in play, and now he's playing a Sage's Training. Now, one thing I want to mention is that I saw in Ross's hand, I saw that he has a Twins already in his hand. So that is... I mean, that just represents Vile Plume to me. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So we are going to see Ross get a Vile Plume in play, uh, barring any unusual circumstances. So, I mean, that Cynical came down one turn too late, and we're going to have to see him struggle to find his uh, Quilavas again. Yeah, I mean, even though t Tom started off really quickly, he did not have a Cynical out. He had to waste an energy retreating. Actually, the Tails on Fireworks the first turn was kind of a big deal. You know, it... Made him pay another energy to retreat, so now there's not an energy on his rest ram. So, honestly, we're, like, probably at least two turns away from seeing Tom attack again, which is really unfortunate. He basically gave Ross access to Twins without being fully set up. He's not putting any more pressure on, so this is kind of the situation Ross wanted. But you can't blame Tom when, you know, he's kind of on a the clock. There's not... I mean, there's maybe... 20 25 minutes left so he's got to take prizes um at the same time he doesn't want to walk into twins so tough situation he decided to take the prize right away but it looks like ross is at an advantage unless tom can pull something out of his head here yeah um oh man now i was gonna say that it was advantage tom for a long time for all oh, by a long time i mean two turns all two turns it, yeah <laughs> but it was definitely advantage tom for a little while um mm -hmm. you saw tom come right out of the gates and if we would have just been able to, uh, I, I guess, just see him knock out that Solosis, we would have seen a, a much different game. But now that Ross is stabilized, and I mean, obviously, partially due to that uh, Pokemon collector, Ross is now in the driver's seat. Ross can now control the speed of this game, and um, especially now that the Solosis is still alive. Like you mentioned, he's still a couple turns away from being able to attack. Ross just has all the time in the world, and we're seeing that Twins out of Ross, and uh, he's going to start establish a Twins chain here. So I'm pretty sure that first one that he got was automatically a Twins. Yeah. So, they, so uh, well, actually, yeah. it could be for Rare Candy Vile Plume because at this point, getting Vile Plume out is probably priority number one. This is so, true. Very good point. But I was going to say, Tom did play a reversal the last turn. What do you think he was going for there? Was he just trying to get rid of trainers or was he targeting a certain Pokemon? I think it was a combination of both. I think I would have gone after the Oddish if I was him. Um, you don't really care about the chance here of the other Solosis, obviously. So you just try to find your opponent in a bad spot. Uh, you try to see if he maybe doesn't have a Twins for a turn, and if you can knock out both Oddishes before he can evolve, then you're going to put him in another bad spot, obviously. Um, an unwinnable one, but unfortunately uh, I would not, for Tom... I would not describe Ross's position as a bad spot. No, <laughs> I wouldn't either. I would describe Ross's position as the ideal spot. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. um, he's he's got everything he needs. Uh, he doesn't even need a Clef to eat this game. He's got a, a supporter chain. He's got all his evolutions. 
the guy's on cloud nine. Um, I really don't think he's uh, feeling like he's in any danger of losing this game. And he just discards a couple of trainers with that Sage's training. Very easy Sage. Um, and we see the first energy attachment on the Suikin and T-Legend. Ross is uh, putting his opponent on a clock here. Yeah, he's got the Reuniclus too. Uh, unfortunately, it just might be a matter of time before we see Tom go down. Uh, once Ross's deck gets set up with all these pieces, the Vileplume, the Reuniclus, the Suikinante Legend, there's nothing a Typhlosion deck can really do unless they get out, um, you know, a couple Typhlosions and keep using Flare Destroy to discard the energy off of it. That would be his only real hope. But I don't think Ross is going to walk into that. Tom's still got to take... Five prizes to win this game, unless time gets called. So it's going to be tough. I don't think Ross is going to attack with that thing until he's got plenty of energy on it. And once it comes out, it's usually doomsday for Typhlosion. Yeah, well, the good news for Tom is that he actually has a Typhlosion in play right away. Um, bad news for Tom? Doesn't actually matter. <laughs> uh, I was trying to find a better way of putting it, but there really isn't. It's just... Ross has inevitability on his side. Uh, again, no way to knock out that Suikinente legend. So sacrifice some prizes. Let your opponent feel like he's uh, in control of the game. Like, I mean, I'm sure Tom doesn't feel like it, but uh, Tom's at least taking some prizes, but it doesn't really matter because he's eventually going to establish a lock, and he has more than enough time to finish this game. All right now, one of the downsides is Tom does have that Typhlosion, but he was through Quilava, so that's one less Quilava he has in his deck. You would prefer the first one to be through Rare Candy, just so you can actually evolve more of them with Quilava now that Bioplume's out. We can't see any more Rare Candies from either player, uh, so it's going to be a struggle to get a second Typhlosion out. And without two, you can't really do anything in the first place, but even if he had two, it would be a struggle. So when you only have one Typhlosion against fully set up that thing Ross has going <laughs> over there, <laughs> uh, it's going to be ugly. Yeah, um, so at this point, again, inevitability on his side, plays a second energy on the Suikunente Legend, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I just see him pass here. He, he moves the energy up to the Gloom, the Sacrificial Gloom, yep. and, um, well, he doesn't have a Reuniclus in play yet, but Actually, that might he, change. He does. Oh, I'm sorry, it just, it's <laughs> such a big glare. It, look, it still looked like a Duosion for a little while. But, uh, yeah, so we see a Zekrom come into play and um, just he... passes Sacrificial Gloom. If he did not have a Reuniclus in that play, he would be cheating by moving that damage up to Gloom. But good thing Ross is not a cheater. He uh, knows what he's doing. And we got some judges watching there. I don't think they let him get away with it. <laughs> all right, all right. You got me. <laughs> I messed up. <laughs> um, so we are seeing a uh, yeah blue flare off of the uh, restaurant. Knocks out that soccer. Wow. Is Gloom weak to Psychic as well, or is it weak to Fire? Not weak to Psychic. All right, so only 120 damage <laughs> dealt to the Gloom. <laughs> and uh, we see a Zacron become active, and that's the end of the easy prizes for Tom. You're going to have to work for your prizes now, buddy. Yeah, but uh, actually, promoting this Zekrom, Ross is fully aware that Typhlosion could discard his energy, even though uh, probably not possible, because I don't see an energy on Tom's Typhlosion. He's covering it up, but I don't think there is one. No, there uh, wasn't so... one at the end of the turn now, sir. Oh, all right, so it's not really possible, especially now that he has twins. I mean, he could go in there, um, just start attacking, but he decides to play it safe, make sure I got a bunch of energy on this thing, make sure they can't get discarded. Uh, but one thing that's going to happen is probably the Zekrom will be knocked out one way or another, by Tom or by Ross just simply moving damage up to it so he doesn't have to pay the retreat cost. And in either case, Tom is going to get his fourth prize, uh, now that means if time does get called, and then by the end of the three turns that you get after time is called, that Ross does not even the score or anything like that, Tom would actually be declared the winner of this game. It'll count as a complete game and we'd move on to game three, but I think we have plenty of time left where that won't matter. We'll have to find out. Yeah, so we do just see an outrage out of Tom here. Um, at this point he's playing the energy, uh, he's being conservative with his energies. And um, he's only dealing, I believe, 30. So uh, he's not going to be able to outrace him like he might have hoped. So at this point, I, I mean, if you're Tom, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking 
about some palm trees. Uh, Maybe shaking some hands, <laughs> saying, "All right, well, I'll see you, <laughs> see you in Hawaii." Yeah, I mean, hey, when you think about it, okay, it sucks. You don't get to move on to the finals, but you're in the top four. You pretty much hit your goal. You're winning a trip to Hawaii the next year at Worlds. And Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you're winning a free trip to Hawaii to play in next year's World Championship. This is pretty much your goal heading into this tournament, right? I mean, obviously you want to be a world champion, but uh, second goal would be top four. This way, you really have everything you want, and everything after top four is like icing on the cake. So even though Tom's going to be upset... (laughs) I don't know. I don't think being the world champion can be described as icing on the cake. Well, it sort of is when you say what's at stake. I mean, would you mind being fourth place at Worlds? You know what? I think I would, but... uh, (laughs) Eventually, Would um, you? All right, I'll trade yeah. spots with you. <laughs> Eventually, you know, the sunny breeze and the palm trees and the beautiful Hawaiian girls would wipe my tears away. Um, <laughs> because, I mean, you at least have another shot at doing it, at, at taking another shot the following year. So you definitely have that um, You have that in mind, but it's, it's still going to have to be a bitter feeling. I mean, neither of us have been in this spot. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately but yeah I mean, it, it just has to be a bitter feeling where you just sit there and go like man what could have been you know you see everybody's name on the on the the pokemon hall of fame and you know you just wish that was you that said world champion everybody's everybody's dream that that's gotta be yeah it's definitely gonna sting but probably not longer than about two or three minutes because then you realize oh hey uh tom actually would get a trophy because he would finish third based on standings from Swiss. So he's going to end up with a trophy. He's going to end up with a trip to Hawaii and invite to next year. So he doesn't even have to play in his ritual nationals as his one tournament every year. <laughs> so I think he'll be okay. I mean, I'm sure he's going to be okay, but still, it's going to sting. Um, so we are seeing just still that one type of We never got to see a second Quilava, um, at least not yet. And feels <laughs> feels like uh, we're in the middle of a little runway there but um but yeah it's just oh geez tom tom knows it um i I have a feeling that everybody knows that the writing's on the wall and um at this point he's just eking and hoping his opponent messes up to be honest i think that's his best (laughs) his best bet but ross is too good to mess up here yeah now let's clarify i mean if you were just kind of walking by and you saw this game you would think oh wow Tom's way ahead. He's going to win this game. He's got two prizes left. His opponent's got five. I think we're going to go to game three. But uh, when you take a look, there's the vile plume that's preventing any trainers. Reuniclus, it's going to move damage off. That Sui Kunente legend's going to keep knocking stuff out. And honestly, once Ross gets his lock set up, all momentum stops for his opponent. And here we are. Tom's just kind of taking it all in, realizing there's not a whole lot he can do anymore. But... Might as well try. Yeah. Um, now, we are getting word right now that David Cohen actually defeated his opponent, who, by the way, has a pretty cool first name. Um, what, it, and, what was it? It starts with a J. Yeah, it ends with a Osue. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, he, he actually defeated my, my unfortunate buddy over there. And it looks like he's going to be piloting Embor Magnezone to the finals. And it looks like it might be Ross. I don't want to say it yet, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a very solid chance that Ross uh, is going to be is going to be his opponent in the finals. So we're definitely going to be looking forward to that game. This it's going to be a great matchup between the two decks. They match up very well. Well, you might not want to say it, but I'll say it. Uh, the only way for Tom to win at this point is if Ross accidentally forgets to move damage off his active Pokemon, or uh, accidentally flips over his prizes. As a no, that even wouldn't do it. Um, <laughs> has a change of heart and says, no, Tom, I want you to go on. You're the better man. Uh, <laughs> the other situation is Tom turns into the Hulk and smashes the table. That might cause some problems. But those situations aside, uh, I don't see Tom getting past Ross here, and we'll see Ross move on to the finals. All right. You said it, not me. Um, <laughs> we, we're going to see Pidgeotto Trainer. Uh, that's uh, Ross's nickname go on to the finals and play against David Cohen, um, mm-hmm. whose nickname I don't know if he even has one. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, we're going to be seeing them face off. And what do you think about the matchup? Do you feel like it's a, it's as close as I think it is or, um, or not? 
Well, when you look at it on paper... Before you start that, I just want to mention that we're seeing a sacrificial Cyndaquil now <laughs> against the Suicunente legend. Yeah. Uh, poor Cyndaquil. It got the short end of the stick there. <laughs> Drew the short straw. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to point out on your Pidgeotto trainer front that Ross does actually have a little Pidgeotto to his left. Uh, next to his damaged counter box, there is a tiny Pidgeotto rooting him on, giving him the strength to take down Tom. But uh, to the matchup... We have Magnezo and Embor, which on paper seems like probably the deck Ross did not want to run into. It has pretty much access to knock out everything Ross has in one hit. So when you're playing Ross's deck, your plan is to get this lock up with Bioplume or Uniclus, and then you just send out high hit point Pokemon that don't get knocked out in one hit. But what do you do when your opponent can knock out your Pokemon in one hit? Kind of ruins your plan, doesn't it? But you never know if Bioplume makes some games weird. So, it might be even, but I'd give the edge to the Thambor Magnezone deck. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm just accounting for the for the Vileplume factor more than anything. I just feel like if you're if you're Ross and you get a quick turn two Vileplume or something, Embor is just in so much trouble. But really, that's the best bet. And, I mean, if your opponent doesn't run into your twins, then you're going to have a lot of trouble um, pulling that off. But anyways, we do see a Blissey come down and heals off all of that damage that uh, Tom's been, um, you know, working towards uh, dealing the entire game. And <laughs> doesn't matter how many cynicals you have left, Tom. It's, it's okay. It's we over. have a Twins. Tom can search for any two cards in his deck, which I'm sure will. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. And he searched for the Quilava, which was actually a prize. He just wanted to get it in play, but he couldn't. And that's it. It looks like. Pidgeotto trainer himself, Mr. Ross Cawthon, is going to be going up against David Cohen in the finals of the Pokemon TCG World Championships. Yeah, congratulations to both players. Tom for a great run. Top eight at Nationals and then top four at Worlds. It's nothing to scoff at. And now we have Ross going to the finals for the second time. We'll see if he can take home a first place, avenge his loss in 2005. Can't believe it's actually been that long, but it has. And we're going to see a great matchup in the finals between Ross and David. Yeah, you mentioned that both of these players, Tom and Ross, were flying under the radar for for a long time, and I really don't think that's going to be the case anymore. Both of these players have been great since since they became competitive at the game, and they both had stellar showings at at Worlds, and Ross even has a chance of actually being the world champion. So with all their accomplishments in mind, I mean, you have to consider these two the some of the elite legends in the game today, and they're just they're great people to. You know, they're, they're great ambassadors for the game, and uh, I'm excited to see where, where they go in the future. Yeah, I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the finals. So, I guess thanks for watching this game, and we're going to have the finals soon. Hope you guys are excited as I am, and we'll see who becomes the world champion. Yeah, um, I'm Crimson. He was Kyle Pukasukovic, and take it easy, guys. Thanks for watching.